Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson with Everyday Seminar. Before we move on to today's uh, topic, let's go through the solution to last week's problem. So the question was, evaluate the definite integral. Okay, and the function here, x squared minus x. Now remember this formula? Here, the Newton Leibniz forma, formula or the um, integral evaluation formula and also as we're going to do today it's part of the fundamental theory of calculus anyways so what do we do evaluate or calculate um, let's start from the integral and the integrand x squared minus x in respect to x so what we do let's not forget that the derivative of a capital F function of x is equal to the function of x, small f. Therefore, okay, we take x squared, what is x squared? x squared becomes x cubed over 3 minus x2 x squared over 2. Okay. Now what we do with this is you can see our limits, our upper limit is 2, lower limit 1. So what we do here, we put in 2, okay, here. We substitute 2 here, and a will be 1, we substitute 1, and then we minus that. So, 2, 3, minus 3, put 2 again here, squared minus 2, let's just put a bracket there. So that's where we put into x, all of that, minus input 1, 1, 3, over 3, minus 1 squared, over 2, okay, 2, 2, that's 8, 8 over 3, minus 4 over 2, minus 1 over 3, 1 over 2, how can we do this? 8 over 3. Now the way I like to, uh, the way I usually do it, 2, 3 is a 6 over 16 minus 12. Take away 6, 2 minus 3. Okay, we're going to need more space. I'll just quickly take that off. Therefore, coming up here. We have 16 take away 12, that's 4 over 6 minus negative 1 over 6. Okay, brackets. So negative, negative becomes 4 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which equals to 5 over 6. Okay, so this is a simple way to evaluate, uh, to find an, um, antiderivatives, okay, an integration, 5 over 6. Okay, let's move on to today's topic. So today's topic with Everyday Seminar, the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. And today we're not going to go, you know, into details, but we're just going to cover the basics, the introdu introduction and basics. Okay, let's move on. So our key terms for today, the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, uh, antiderivative, or also known as an indefinite integral, the definite integral, uh, evaluate or calculate, interval, and subtraction. And um, here are two very important symbols you'll see in the fundamental theory of calculus, or FTC for short. Okay? Here we have differentiation. Okay, we did we covered that before, and here we have integration. Upper limit, lower limit. Okay, let's move on. So, the fundamental theorem of calculus, or FTC. The fundamental theorem of calculus shows the relationship between differentiation and integration, showing that they are inverse operations. Okay, we showed that earlier over here. Okay. It can also be interpreted as a precise statement of the fact that differentiation is the inverse of integration. Um, 
Another important part, there are two parts to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay? And here it is written out in a very fancy font. There's one here and another one here. Okay? Now, we're going to talk about these two equations, these two formulas. Let's move on. So, the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. If f is continuous on a and b, basically if we have a graph here, x and y, and the line is connected, okay, every point from here to here, okay, they all have a derivative on every point. So then the function, capital F, x, is equal to the integral of the function t with respect to t. Um, look over here. So if we, notice that that's used for integration. So if we integrate, sorry, differentiation, if we were to differentiate an integral, we would end up with the original function. Let me give you an example. Say, for example, we start off with a, a function, fx of uh, equals 2x. Make it very simple. Then, therefore, if x is equal to x a function of t with respect to t, which is equal to x a, say for example, here, 2t with respect to t, then we have t squared, uh, limits of x over a, okay? So 2t becomes t squared, and then this moves on, this becomes, if we input the upper limit and the lower limit, okay, it'll be at this minus that, subtracting that. So x squared minus a squared, and therefore, the derivative of this becomes 2x. Okay, therefore, if you look at that, that 2x here is equivalent to our original function of 2x. And that's where you, we have that formula early on. The derivative of fx is equal to the original function. Okay, we'll go more in, uh, in detail in this later on. Let's move on to the second part. Now, the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, if f is continuous again at every point from a to b, and if, and if f is any antiderivative of f on a and b, then the integral of the function fx with respect to x is equal to the integral capital F, the upper limit, minus the lower limit. Now that formula we, we did um, before and earlier on is also known as the Integral Evaluation Theorem or the Newton-Leibniz Formula. Now, basically, this formula simplifies the computation of definite integrals. Okay, it makes it easier to calculate instead of using Riemann uh, rectangles. To evaluate an integral, take the antiderivatives, okay? Capital F is the antiderivative, remember? The derivative of the antiderivative equals small f. So you take the antiderivatives and subtract. So the upper limit minus the lower limit. Okay, what you want to do is you find the antiderivative of the function. Okay, using two limits, b and a. Okay, more on this later. Let's move on. Now I thought I'd bring this up today, an example um, application of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So have a look at this. We have uh, the distance in centimeters, our variable x, and we have the temperature, okay, in degrees Celsius, capital T. Now the question is, a metal wire of length eight centimeters is heated at one end. The table above gives selected values of the temperature, Tx, in degrees Celsius, of the wire with x centimeters, the variable, from the heated end. So we have to find the integral of a tx, okay? There's our function here with respect to x and indicate units of measure. 
explain and what does this actually mean in terms of the temperature of the wire. So uh, key things to remember, differentiation, it's a rate, okay? Delta Y over delta X, and it's usually, it's, it's the gradient, basically. And then we have integration, which is the area under the curve, or sometimes you'll hear the area under the graph. Okay, so basically, you have that, and an area under the graph is integration, and to find the gradient, you use differentiation, okay, of the line, the tangent, the point of any line, okay. So, evaluation part of FTC. Now, what we're looking for here is we're going to we're gonna put in our values from the upper limit of 8 and 0 for the distance. So, we have limits here of 8 and 0, and then what we're going to do is basically you find out what is the difference in temperature of 8 and 0. So if you match your, uh, the temperature function, at 8 you had 55, and uh, at 0 centimeters you had 100. So here, we have, here's the distance, here, and this equates to our temperatures over here. So basically, you have the end, take away the beginning, so the end temperature after, let's say for example a stick here, so over here, 100 degrees Celsius, and 8 centimeters here, the temperature is 55 degrees. So basically the FTC is asking for what is the difference from here and here, and the difference is basically negative 45 degrees Celsius. Again, the integral represents the change in temperature in degrees Celsius from the heated end of the wire so there's a fire here, all the way to the other end, okay, 8 centimeter, 0 centimeter. And that's basically what it's all about. Okay, hopefully when you do today's homework, you'll understand a bit more. Let's move on. So in summary, um, both theorems, let f be a function which is continuous on the interval from a to b. Now, let f be an indefinite integral or antiderivative of f. Then the integral of the function x with respect to x equals the function of b minus the function of a, the upper limit minus the uh, uh, lower limit. Okay. Second part, the function, for example, of ax is equal to the integral of ft with respect to t. So this is an indefinite integral or antiderivative of f. And the second part eventually shows that the derivative of a of a of x is equal to the function fx. Now, basically again, the first part of this theorem tells us how to evaluate a definite integral, provided that f has an indefinite integral. The second part of the theorem tells us that f has an indefinite integral. The only problem is actually finding a formula for the indefinite integral, which we can easily evaluate. So as we mentioned earlier, with our example using 2x, put into x squared. Uh, maybe there's something I should mention first before we move on. Notice that uh, we talked about all antiderivatives have a constant, something, something, plus c, plus c. So what happens in this first part, if you have that minus that over here, these c's will cancel out, okay? Just be aware of that. Somebody was asking me about that today. And one more summary, let's move on. So remember, the FTC establishes the relationship between the derivative and integral. Okay, this and the integral. The FTC simply says that the rate of change of the area under the curve up to the point x equals the height of the area at that point. Okay, notice how we talked about b and then x, and we had a here. Lastly, the FTC helps us to find definite integrals. Okay, makes it easier instead of using uh, rectangles, we just subtract the integral, the upper limit minus the lower limit. Let's move on. So thank you for joining us today with Everyday Seminar. Before we leave, 
Try this at home. Evaluate or calculate using the FTC. Uh, this, this equation, notice that it has a differential part. So differentiate the integral, the yeah, limits. Uh, the function is 43, okay, with respect to t. Okay, and uh, we'll do the, we'll give you the solution next week. Thank you again for joining us today with Everyday Seminar. Hope you had a great time. Have a good day.